we came to know uh, about the uh, uh, you know technology once we once we became expert of that stuff we started manipulating genome of the animal a lot we started manipulating things a lot and uh, and uh, we created a lot of different types of animals I, i don't think that all of them are required and you will see as well uh, but we tried a lot of things uh, i mean we tried to add a lot of genes uh, in the animals to see their effects i told you that there are two ways to study the function of a gene the one is the gain of function studies addition of a certain genes and the other is the loss of function study by removing a particular gene from the organism so together these two will let us know about the function of a gene and if we remove the gene from an organism that will help us to understand that how important that gene is because earlier we believe it's like a one gene one protein hypothesis something like that ek gene ek function but today we know that this is not accurate one gene is connected with lots of other genes and that might hamper and that might affect the function of lots of other genes as well we only came to know once we remove a particular gene from an organism then we came to know about the importance of that one gene and some genes are so important that when we remove that gene from the organism the organism fails to divide fails to develop and such genes and such proteins are called as embryonic lethal they are called as embryonic lethal sometimes you will read that word in the description of the proteins when you go to the different portals and study the function of different proteins that those proteins are embryonic lethal that means the people who tried to knock that gene out from the mouse or from an organism the organism fails to develop those were such an important proteins or required in the earlier phase of development the other way is that adding genes adding things to them so this, this is an example of a transient mouse uh, uh, with a, with an additional growth hormone and you can theoretically expect what will happen the the mouse with the additional copies of the growth hormone should grow better bigger it has a big skeleton big structure something like that and this is the wild type and that is an obvious outcome but the problem with the tra- transient creation in mammals and in higher animal is that that it is too laborious too much laborious too is less word too much laborious even um, if you imagine the procedure it's like it it requires a hell of patience to execute those experiments and for example this uh, cute little uh, uh, monkey is uh, andy uh, and this is the first transient primate which was created which was born uh, in january 2000 and imagine the difference see the dif- see the amount of effort 224 unfertilized rhesus eggs were infected with the gfp virus i mean they used a virus which already contains a gfp protein that also means that we will be able to see whether our gene is successfully inserted or not because if our gene is successfully inserted it will also take the gfp with itself so if the single cell stage or the stem cells or the embryonic stem cells they glow in green color under the uv visible light so we will be able to know oh our gene is successfully incorporated into the genome and we can use this to go further in the next stage what will the next stage half of the fertilized eggs they grew and divided only half of them and then 40 were implanted into 20 surrogate mothers five males were born two were still born and andy was the only live monkey out of all that experiment but the andy also contains what the andy also contains the gfp each and every cell of andy contains the gfp so one andy out of 224 unfertilized rhesus x was born just one primate so that is the level uh, of hard work uh, and amount of uh, uh, activity you need to execute in order to get one and alive uh, and uh, the main reason the real problem if you ask me okay, what is the real thing behind is the efficiency of the procedure every stage decreases the efficiency many many folds and we eventually ended up with one nd because we lost many genes in the first stage in the second stage and the third stage 
and uh, the unfortunate thing is that we usually do not able to understand the outcome of the result until unless we spend many many weeks that the things we have done five weeks ago are were failed at that time and we came to know after a long period of time and that is the trouble in these type of similar sort of research people have created alba alba is also a, a very beautiful bunny but with the with the enhanced or egfp uh, enhanced uh, gfp protein so this i don't know this is required or not i mean you people can ask uh, those scientists it's, it was created in 2000 not uh, uh, very far in history but i think that was created just to prove that we can successfully uh, incorporate a gene uh, in the embryonic stem cells or at a single cell single cell stage we can put a gene of our own choice in order to show in order to make it more visible they use gfp that is that is not normal that is not natural that bunny grows uh, glows in uh, under under uv visible light anyways so transient pigs they were created fish were created that means just for fun for 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 decoration uh, i mean about um, the gfp was added rfp was added remember there are alternate versions of green fluorescent protein rfp yfp is there as well so different types of uh, color uh, proteins were incorporated in the fish just to make them more beautiful and uh, you know more expensive and using the transient technology the other way is the is removing a gene that is called as the knockout i will going to talk about the other thing that is the knockdown usually people confuse these two terms a lot knockdown and knockout uh, be very very careful about these two techniques okay the knockdown is the uh, for example the nucleus contains the dna the dna produces rna and rna produces the protein or the function and that's famously called as central dogma so the information is here in the dna after the transcription it creates rna after the translation it will going to create a protein or a function the knockdown is the removal or breakdown of rna it is about removing the rna from the system so once you remove the rna from the system logically proteins will not be created so that is how we will be able to 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 remove the function in one cell or in many cells so removing the messenger rna from the system will going to remove the function as well and we can study the effect and after effects this is a way of study the loss of function it is called loss of function studies initially we thought that how we can do a loss of function study most easiest of the way to to destroy the gene so if there is a dna in the nucleus that is supposed to produce rna that rna is supposed to produce the protein in the function how about destroying the dna how about creating the mutation in the dna that was the only thought we know 20 25 years ago that that is the only way we can study the loss of function what we can do we can delete the gene so if we delete the gene permanently at the dna that will not going to produce the rna and ultimately no protein will be there this process is called as knock out the dna knock out it seems scary seems bad seems weird and strict because once you lost the dna or once you lost uh, a functional gene in the dna the function will be lost permanently you will not be able to reverse that thing so gene knockout is no way near we will not be able to reverse that thing by any means so initially that was the initial process we do things like this the on the other hand the gene knockdown is somehow a more kind way of study of loss of function studies because we can remove the messenger rna destroy the messenger rna we can study the effects and the after effects and after the job 
the messenger the new messenger rna will be created because the dna is intact here they it will going to create new rounds of messenger rna and that will going to restore the function as well but in the knockdown case we lost the function completely and permanently that is the most easiest of the way we can imagine how we can study uh, how we can really remove uh, the function of the gene just clipping destroying the gene but knockdown is proved to be a better version we use small interfering rna we will study that thing in a chapter the small interfering rna that actually help us to understand the function of lots of genes so but the first thing is first the permanent removal of a gene that is what we call as the knockout the permanent removal of a gene in a cell destroying a gene in a cell means diff, means something else destroying a gene in an organism i mean destroying a gene in an organism is entirely a different thing because an organism is a collection of large number of trillions of cells in a cell you might be able to get the function of the cell after the loss of one gene but in an organism one gene is not only related to one function it is also related to the other functions as well so once you able to create an organism without a gene you will see the effects and the after effects what will happen to that organism how long it will going to live what are the malfunctions you can observe in that organism so whatever the new things you will going to observe in that organism you can relate all those things with the function of the gene if you remove a gene called as uh, gene x and you will see the organism is not able to see perfectly the organism's heart does not develop normally you see its skin cells are different so theoretically you can relate that the vision and the structure of heart cells uh, and the skin cells all of these things are somehow related to that one single gene one way or another so that is how originally we accumulate our knowledge and our understanding about the functions of the genes when you when you google a gene on on internet it will take you to certain portals it will take you to the ncbi sometimes it will take to the other places gene cards and um, and uh, expasi all those portals accumulated lots of information about every gene and all those informations were generated with the help of this technology we should be thankful for that technology although it's a very uh, unkind sort of experiment removing a one particular gene in an organism to develop a knockout mouse so a knockout mouse help us help us a lot to study that one particular gene is related to how many functions and after that scientists started experimenting further to develop one to one correspondence between the genes and the functions and also sometimes people want the laboratories to create different disease models like for example we know that if the p53 is mutated the 50% probability is that that the organism will going to develop cancer the organism is going to develop cancer okay if the p53 is mutated 50% probability is that that a mutated p53 carrying organism will going to develop cancer in its lifetime so sometimes the people who are studying cancer and who are trying to do experiments with this disease who want to test their medical medicine who want to test their drugs they want a mouse with high chance of developing cancer in its lifetime you can suggest those people what you need to do the mouse genome contains p53 all you need to do is to send a copy send a copy with the with the altered version of p53 with a dysfunctional copy of p53 
and you need to replace the correct version with the erroneous or with the faulty version of P53. That is all you need to do in the cell of the organism, in the embryonic cell of the organism, in the stem cell of that organism. Once you incorporate the erroneous P53 here into the stem cell, you will develop that particular stem cell with a mutated version of P53 and you use that cell to create an organism or to create a mouse. That mouse will, all the cells of that mouse contains mutated versions of P53. And that mouse will definitely going to develop high chances that it will going to develop cancer when it grows. And people purchase those mouse and then they can experiment their drug, they can experiment their things at the same time. Okay, so uh, the important thing is that how they actually create, how they create that stuff. Um, how they create it. In order to create a transgene or a knockout mouse, both of these techniques are actually uh, uh, follow the same paths. And I can tell you it's a very laborious, but if you develop that skill, if you have that technique, and if you have an expertise of doing that things, you will going to be a very expensive uh, technician for the rest of the world. They will love to have you because you will be creating wonderful models for them. Whatever they will imagine, you can create for them. So first thing you need to have is the embryonic stem cells or even the pluripotent stem cells can do the job. But in case of mouse, we don't care. We extract the, the embryonic stem cells and we know from where we can get it. Fantastic beasts and from where to find them. Fantastic embryonic stem cells and from where to find them? We can find them from the inner cell mass of early blastula. Early blastula stage inner cell mass so we can extract them. And the next step is to do your experimentation with those uh, embryonic stem cells. Manipulate them. What that means? Add the genes which you want to add or knock out the gene which you want to knock out. Do the things which you want to do. You can do the same experiment with the induced pluripotent stem cells as well. But once you have the pluripotent cells, they can become everything. Once you do, once you have done with your experimentation, you find and you extracted the right embryonic stem cells with the altered version of genome and you use that stem cell and as a zygote, place it into the womb of a surrogate mother, it will grow into the organism of your own choice with the altered genome. But that organism will be, it will be defined by the person who is altering the genome of that organism. How are you able to alter the genome of that organism? Just see some practical, uh, you know, uh, implications and details behind that experiment. Let's start one by one. The first thing is that I have five minutes and six minutes, that's good enough. First thing, we need embryonic stem cells. We can, we can have it. I told you that we can get, we can use the induced pluripotent stem cells as well, or we can get it from the inner cell mass of early blastula. The next step is incorporation of an external gene. If you want to create a transgene, if you want to create a transgene, that means you need to send an additional copy of that gene. But if you want to create a knockout mouse, which is the topic right now to create a knock knockout mouse, we need to send an erroneous or a, a, a mutated copy of a gene. You can ask me how it is possible that an external gene will enter into the cell and it will going to replace, you know, the same gene. So the, the correct copy will be replaced by uh, the mutated copy we are sending within the cells. Please keep this question in your mind, okay? How it is, it will, it, it will happen with the help of a, a thing which is called as homologous recombination. This is the traditional way of doing things. But now we have more advanced ways, but traditionally 
scientists executed that experiment with the help of the uh, term which is called as homologous recombination okay i will speak about this thing later on but at this time just believe on me that the external mutated version of the gene entered into the cell and it will going to replace the correct copy and we also added some markers so we can identify we can see we should be able to figure out that out of all the embryonic stem cells which of the embryonic stem cell has successfully received our gene our genes mean the gene with the fault the gene with the errors okay so uh, this experiment actually requires lots of expertise because you have like uh, several hundred embryonic stem cells you try to add the genes in all of them but because of the efficiency only few of them able to receive your external uh, gene remember the external gene is the one with the faulty or with the mutated copy of the gene very many few of them able to receive the external gene people use viral vectors people use other ways you know whatever we have studied all those techniques are used in order to send that thing right within the cells few of them able to receive those uh, those uh, external genes some of them are able to actually incorporate it into the genome and those cells those embryonic stem cells who successfully incorporate the external uh, gene they will be able to express the marker as well for example you might be able to know based on the presence and absence of certain markers that whether the gene is incorporated or not i am not asking you to put the gfp here otherwise it is so easy to see if the cells are glowing that means your gene is there but sending gfp to the mouse means that every cell of the mouse will be will have a will going to have the gfp and that can cause complication and troubles scientists don't like to put uh, any x y z things to every single cell of the organism so they choose certain smaller markers which they can identify with the help of pcr and other methods but after 200 embryonic stem cells they will grow in different colonies the 200 col colonies were grown to develop sorry not to develop they were grown they multiplied to produce more embryonic stem cells and all those colonies were tested one by one one by one for the presence of the gene which you have sent presence of gene is there no gene is there no rejected 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 successful this is the colony which has received colony means this is actually started from the one single cell it develops into a colony and you need to work very hard in order to keep that colony as stem cell if anything bad happens during that experiment remember anything bad happens during that experiment what will happen the cells will going to differentiate if they start the process of differentiation here you will lose the experiment if you fail to send the external dna into the cells you will lose the experiment so there are so many ways you can lose the experiment and the most easiest of the way you can lose this experiment is that that if you change the ph for some period of time if you fail to change the media for some period of time if you fail to give the ingredients right for some period of time the cell will started differentiate the cell will differentiate and they will going to change so you need to be very careful uh, during all that time to keep those cells in a stem cell stage and you have to do your experiments as you, have, you need to do your experiments as well restart the session so there are a lot of reasons uh, i mean you might be we might not be able to get the perfect uh, embryonic stem cells you might not be able to grow the uh, to 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 grow the uh, the uh, stem cells normally because remember the stem cells are supposed to stay in the state of stem cell they should not differentiate if they start differentiation you will lose the function you will never be able to use those cells to grow a baby after that in the future so the scientists are working very hard and they also changing they are also engineer they are also using genetic engineering to change their genome okay but uh, luckily one of the cell able 
is able to receive the external DNA and the colony of that cell, when you, you actually get, you take that colony, actually what people are doing, they take that colony out and they grow them into another culture dish. So now all that, all those em uh, embryonic stem cells are the ones which receive the external gene. Some portion of those cells are used to execute uh, the PCR reaction to confirm the presence of an external DNA. If the external DNA is present, scientist says uh, they, they are happy. Uh, if they do the PCR and they fail to find the external fragment here, they can say, oh my God, nothing is there. They can go back and then repeat their experiment and they try to find other ways. But luckily, what, what we are able to see is that, that from this colony, we analyze and study and confirm the presence of an external gene. An external gene in our case is the altered version of a gene, say P53. So we want to knock out the P53. So all these cells are now carrying the mutated P53 because the faulted P53, which we are sending is actually able to replace the functional copy of the P53. And also these cells are uh, supposed to be stem cells. So uh, they are the embryonic stem cells. So these cells can be used to generate uh, an embryo to, to generate a baby. But how scientists are doing with this experiment? So we have certain number of cells, okay? One story stops here. Let's start another one. So there is another female mouse, okay? Uh, it has a, 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 it was mated and wait for three days to find its embryo. So this is the embryo on the third day. This is exactly the early blastula. And it also contains the inner cell mass. Can you see all these things? If I'm coloring the cells, they are the inner cell mass. The inner cell mass is here. But remember this inner cell mass come from where? This come from this white mouse, which is colored as white. The embryonic stem cells, which we have generated with engineered and altered version of the gene, they are in brown color. Okay, just for the sake of understanding. What we are doing, we try to remove some of the cells from here. Sometimes they do not remove, by the way, they just inject it because it is so small to remove the things. What we are doing is there, we, are, we inject our cells in the early blastula here. So now this new embryo has an inner cell mass, which is a mixture of two types of cells. One of the cells are white, means come from there. The other type of cells, which we have just mixed or incorporated. So now the inner cell mass is made up of two types of cells. One are wild type, the other type of cells are the cells which are carrying mutated gene or mutated P53. Now, this is the a kind of, uh, can I say yes, code? this is the kind of a hybrid uh, embryo. And that is an embryo which has an inner cell mass of two types. Now, once you allow that embryo to grow, this is introduced into another surrogate mom or a surrogate mother. And if you allow, allow it to, I'm sorry, whenever somebody enters into the class, I need to click and that actually push me to change the slide automatically. So what we are doing after that, once we have that thing, that thing means once we have that hybrid embryo, we put that hybrid embryo into a surrogate mom. The surrogate mom will going to deliver and it will give rise multiple babies. Now, my question to you is that, that these multiple babies, these multiple babies, they have their structures, heart, kidney, skins, body, tail, everything. We cannot control that the skin of that ma uh, baby of the mouse will come from the wild type inner cell mass or it will be generated out of the engineered inner cell mass. We cannot control this, control this thing. 
but we might be able to see with our own eyes if there is a marker over there some body parts the white ones here the white body parts are coming from where the white body parts are coming from the inner cell mass of the wild type mouse the brown body color of these babies indicating that these are created out of the engineered out of the engineered embryonic stem cells but we cannot control that which inner cell mass will going to be part of which organ it is entirely probable that skin is made up of the wild type cells and heart kidneys and other mesenchyma organs they are made up of engineered stem cells nobody can control but the lot of babies are created and they are made up of they are, they arises out of the two types of the inner cell mass this type of mouse is called as chimera tom cruise ki movie hai na ek mission impossible 2 usme the chimera usme ek virus bana merger of two things uska naam bhi isliye the merge it's like a merger it's like a product of two inner cell masses one inner cell mass wild type the other inner cell mass is the engineered inner cell mass with the faulty or i must say the mutated copy of the genes now these these babies are allowed to mate with each other to produce the next progeny several dozens of mouse will be created in the next progeny some of them will be made up of entirely brown cells that does not mean the others will not be created some of them are white some of them will be like uh, white and brown but some of them few of them will entirely made up of brown cells few of them very few of them will be entirely made up of white cells now you can answer me how it is possible that few of them are entirely made up of brown cells and how it is possible that few of them are entirely made up of white cells answer me please um say because we are using um two mice which we have engineered with half of the engineered cells and when they mate and maybe when the um the sex cells are produced from the brown part for both of the parents when they mate so the child will be 100% made up of, of the brown cells shabash shabash good good point let me make it let me sir did shabash somebody else wants to speak please maybe it's possible that uh, the gene itself the cell we have it's recessive and it needs oh, 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 you know no. it goes through that process oh. abhi genetics ki to aapne yahan par aise ki taise rakhni hai na it is not about genetics okay ye usse badi baat hai okay it's not about alleles it's not dominant recessive nothing no 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 it's not about, it's about the structure of an organism the structure of the baby mouse is made up of two types of cells because they arises from two types of inner cell mass now which structure belongs to which type of inner cell mass we don't know but let's suppose if the sex organs of this mouse if the sex organ of this mouse is originated from the engineered inner cell mass cells what will happen all the sperms or all the eggs that organism will produce will be engineered 100% got this yes sir that's the point that it's it's a it's entirely a probability that the sex organ of the chimeric mouse they produce hundreds of chimeric mouse over there some of them the 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 gamete producing organs ovaries and testes if the ovaries and testes are produced out of the engineered stem cells they will going to produce the sperms and the eggs which contains 100% engineered mutated version of genes 
because they arises from those uh, senses. They wait for that thing. They made them together and found the lucky one, the one organism which contains all the cells coming from the engineered inner cell mass. And that one will be the one which is carrying the mutated copy of the P53. Imagine the, the level of labor over there to get this one precious thing. They have to do a lot of wonderful experiments. And after that, they can raise the generation if they are. And uh, it, that's why it's very expensive. And it was, uh, it's, a, it's a commercial activity to sell these mouse to the, to the experiment for, to, to different laboratories for their experiments. But you can create this thing like for, for, for anything. All you need to do is to understand the, the, the protocol and to develop the ways to efficiently execute all those steps. If you want to be there in this uh, type of world, you need to learn how you can make this step more efficient. Okay? You need to learn how you can make this step more efficient. You need to develop the skills how to send these things into the inner cell mass. You need to learn how to, the more efficient you are in execution of these stages, the more acceptable you will be in the, in the international community for, the, for this. It's a very wonderful skill to have in your pocket. G.